Hello and welcome everybody to another constructed video. Yeah, I know it might seem a little bit strange, but of course, because we've been playing a lot of Arena and because we had high mythic ranking, I am qualified actually for the qualifier weekend, which is in about a week. And now that we are kind of done with our road to rank one, I figured now is at least a decent time to prepare for the upcoming qualifier weekend, which is gonna be, like I said, a week away. And uh, it's gonna be standard. The format's gonna be standard. So I wanted to at least showcase one of the decks here. This is kind of uh, a newer deck that's really risen a lot in popularity. In the most recent st standard challenge, this, this deck, four copies of this deck made it into the top eight. So now a lot of people are definitely ready for this type of deck, but I wanted to give it a shot. And I'm gonna preface this, I'm gonna warn all of you that I am not a master of this deck. As you know, I've been playing a lot of limited, so I'm still just trying to figure out what I wanna play. Uh, as far as decks that I'm leaning towards playing in the event, it's likely gonna be some kind of a mid-range deck, Golgari, Esper, or Demir, just because I think that kind of fits my play style more. But I wanted to showcase the awesomeness that is this teamer control deck. So let's do a quick overview of what this deck is trying to do. Well. As you can see on the right, it's got a ton of lands, right? And you have these tri-lands that basically you play them and it, you sacrifice it, you gain a life, and then you can fetch for a basic. And the idea is you play a bunch of these lands and you self-mill your deck with cards like Aftermath Analyst and Falaji Archaeologist, and then use the Aftermath Analyst, use the ability to return all of these lands again. All of these lands that sacrifice to get a land. And basically that the idea is you fill up your graveyard with lands, you put a bunch of lands into play, and then you fireball them out with World Souls Rage. This is the kill card. This is basically the only win condition in this deck, at least in the main. The idea is you generate a ton of mana, then you World Souls Rage them out. Another nice thing about World Souls Rage is that you can also use this as a form of Aftermath Analyst. Meaning you can cast this card for like three or four to get a bunch of these lands from your graveyard back into play just to further ramp what you're trying to do. Falaji Archaeologist is another two mana card that's looking to mill yourself. Also, it just gets you like a relevant spell to kind of continue keeping your engine going. And then you have um, two copies of Vampire's Vengeance and four copies of Ill-Timed Explosion for the aggressive matches. Uh, namely, the Boros Convoke deck. I believe that's the most popular aggressive deck in the format. And by having six sweepers, that at least gives you a fighting chance against those decks. Next, we have one of the more important cards in the deck, Nissa Resurgent Animus. This card is amazing. So it's a three mana, three, three with landfall. Basically, anytime a land enters a battlefield, you get to you get to basically generate an, a color of mana, right? So anytime you put a Broker's Hideout or Cabaretti Courtyard or any of these lands into play, you generate two mana. When you have Nissa in play, in conjunction with Aftermath Analyst, when you stack the Aftermath Analyst and let's say you get like three of these types of lands into play, that's six mana, right? And basically with Nissa in play and a way to get a bunch of lands into play from the graveyard, you can generate a ton of mana and you can potentially just win the game on the spot with Nissa in play as long as she doesn't die. The really nice thing about Nissa as well is she can potentially replace herself. If you wait and you go Nissa into one of these fetch lands, you can uh, you have a second ability where you can reveal cards from the top of your deck until you reveal an elf or elemental cards. And there are two elves in this deck, Aftermath Analyst and Nissa. Most of the time you want to hit Aftermath Analyst so that you can just continue generating a ton of mana. But of course, sometimes you're going to be able to get another cop redundant copy of Nissa. But this is these are kind of the two core pieces of the deck that I allow you to generate a ton of mana. Then you have four copies of Memory Deluge, great card to mill right, with Aftermath Analyst and Archaeologist, and then of course a great card to just try to put the combo pieces together. And then you have two copies of Spelunking. So some decks play two copies of Kellen, but I found that sometimes the mana could be awkward where you have these lands that get you a red, and you can't always get, um, use the Explore ability or play an extra land ability from Kellen on turn two. So I actually uh, want to try two copies of Spelunking. This card is really, really nice. Uh, in conjunction with Aftermath Analyst, the first time you play the Spelunking, like let's say you have this in play, the first time you activate the Aftermath Analyst, even if you don't have a Nissa in play, right? You put all these lands into play and all the lands that come into play, normally they come into play tapped, they come into play untapped. So you just have a lot more mana to work with and it's another way to kind of ramp. One other thing that I noted with this deck is 
because you have so many of these tap lands, playing the Spelunking on turn three does kind of guarantee that you can play your four drops on turn four. I've definitely had games where I've had too many copies of Broke, Broker's Hideout, Courtyard, etc. And on turn four, I just can't play my ill-timed explosion. And that gives my opponents just enough time to kill me. And then we have four copies of Virtue of Strength. This card helps you basically kill people. What you want to do is once you get a bunch of lands into play, you just slam Virtue of Strength. You hard cast it. It's not too hard. You hard cast this card. Then you have infinite mana, more or less. Then you cast a huge fireball with World Souls Rage for the win. It's also very, very versatile in that Garenbrick Growth is very good in this deck. Oftentimes you can use this to get a, a fetch land to, to uh, you know, just to get another land into play, especially when this is a Resurgent Animist. A lot of times your opponents are going to point their removal spells at your Aftermath Analyst. So this also gives you redundant copies of that. Whatever you you need and then of course in the late game you cast this man if you play multiple copies of this I, I i can't even do the math it's lots lots and lots of mana i've tapped one land for 21 mana before it's ridiculous moving on to the sideboard here we have some removal spells lithomantic barrage for uh you know rafine and what have you a single copy of turned earth just as a way you know it's a decent card for the mirror and if you also play a, a deck that's trying to cheese you with like a deadly cover-up, for example, you can board this in just as a way to shuffle the World Souls Rages back into your deck so they can't exile them. Three copies of Negate for control matchups, three copies of a Braid for aggressive matchups, also great at killing Unlicensed Hearse, a third sweeper in the Vampire's Vengeance. Titania, a very, very good card against aggressive decks. This also is an elemental, so when you activate Nyssa, you can find the Titania, which is why there's one copy. This card is quite nice. If you can go off with Titania and Aftermath Analyst, you gain lots and lots of life. One copy of Shigeki Jukai Visionary. If you're playing against a deck with a lot of hand disruption and counters, this is a way, an uncounterable way in the late game to get a bunch of your cards back. Two copies of Tranquil Furlback as a catch-all. We all know how uh, versatile this card is in standard. And then one copy of Doppelgang in case your opponents are trying to stone brain you out. All right, that was the deck tech here. I'm going to join some best of three matches here because I feel like um, in order to prepare for the tournament, I should be playing best of three matches. We'll play a few and see how it goes. Warning once again, I am not the best conductor of this deck, but I just wanted to showcase one of the sweeter decks in standard. By the way, everybody is ready for this deck at this point. It's been out for a few weeks now, but hey, we're on the play. Uh, this hand has a little too many lands, so can't keep this six lands plus a World Souls Rage, so let's mulligan that. And, oh my gosh, this land is also quite bad. It's got Aftermath Analyst, three copies of Nyssa, and an ill-timed explosion. I don't think I can go to five, though, so I'm going to keep this and just kind of hope to draw a couple of lands. The one thing about this deck, though, is it's pretty good at drawing lands. You have 30 of them in your deck. So um, very, very high chance to find a mana source here. And we are playing against Underground Mortuary, which is likely going to be Golgari Midrange. And this deck is pretty good against Golgari Midrange. So that's good at least, at least game one. But I have noticed that the Golgari Midrange decks have been leaning towards playing um, main deck copies of Tranquil Frillback, specifically for this matchup. I imagine this analyst is going to die, but I think I still just need to play it out. Oh, never mind. Deep Cavern Bat. Okay. That's not too bad just because we have the redundant copies of the Nissa here. So they're likely just going to take Ill-Timed Explosion here and then probably use a removal spell to get Aftermath Analyst off the battlefield. Oh, never mind. They're going to get the Nissa. That's telling me that they might have another removal spell here for the Nissa, but I'm going to run it out here anyways. Let's get in for one. Why not? I know this deck wins in other ways, but hey, my opponent can't really attack me. But if we can find an untapped land, we can still use the Archaeologist, excuse me, the Analyst, to get a couple lands into play. Alternatively, I could have played the Falaji Archaeologist over the Nyssa. But the, the nice thing about playing the Nyssa is instead of them playing one of their powerful three mana cards in Glissa or Sentinel or Preacher, they have to kill the Nyssa, right? So that kind of... Uh, slows them down just a little bit. So I think it's more important to do that because if I play the Archaeologist, they might just play the three. Here, they're going to play a tap land. And what did we find? Oh, that's actually not bad. That is actually not bad. I think I'm just going to kill this bat, get my Nyssa, and put a land into play. And the nice thing about the World Souls Rage, it's kind of like an inefficient removal spell, but hey... You can act, it can also act as a, 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 a mana source. Uh, and you always want to get the tap lands here early because you can uh, buy them back multiple times. Here I'll get forest. You only really need one red source because your red is only really for the removal. 
in the L-Timed Explosion and cards like the World Souls Rage. Moss with Dread Knight, okay, that's completely fine. Looks like they're gonna kill these, this analyst, maybe. Yep, all right. Uh, fetch land would be awesome. I don't actually, what's the proper term for these? I didn't play that much uh, Kamigawa. Just gonna throw that out there. But I'm gonna play Nissa here, and with Broker's Hideout, that's incredible. Hopefully we can find another Aftermath Analyst. Let's tap for blue. Let's go get an island. Second blue for Memory Deluge. All right, we got an Aftermath Analyst, but I don't want to use it just yet, I don't think. I think I want to just play a Falaji Archaeologist here instead. Uh, you know, just because I'm so close to being able to just... Um, uh, if I draw any land, I can go Aftermath, Manal Aftermath Analyst Crack. And this also fills up my graveyard. So if I just wait till I hit Mana Source number 6 and use it all at once, we're looking at 5 lands to get back from the graveyard. Alright, so Deep Cavern Bat from the opponent. We do have multiple copies of Ill-Timed Explosion. So we can, we can definitely just kill the Deep Cavern Bat here, potentially. We'll see what they do. And a Dread Knight. Oh, just drawing a card. Okay. Um, hmm. I think I'm going to start things off with an attack. I doubt they're going to block. They know that we have the Sweeper, but like, if they block, then I just don't have to cast anything, right? So... Alright, so they take the damage, and now I guess we just cast Ill-Timed Explosion here. Uh, let's do this. Alright, what do I want to do? I mean, I can also just choose not to discard anything. I might just do that. Like... Wrathing myself to get back an analyst just doesn't seem worth it, so I'm just going to decline here. And I'll just keep playing out my lands, even though I don't have anything to do with it. Let's just pass. We're in no huge rush just yet. I will say, though, a well-timed Tranquil Throwback can be quite nice. Uh, especially right now with all these lands in my graveyard. So if they do Tranquil Throwback me, it would be pretty bad. All right. Shieldred now definitely putting a little more pressure on us, uh, making me want to play Ill-Timed Explosion. But sadly, the Ill-Timed Explosion doesn't even kill the Shieldred unless I can find the Virtue of Persistence. So this is actually kind of interesting. I can also play Memory Deluge to try to find something else. The thing is, yeah, yeah, I can actually start with Memory Deluge. To try and find a Virtue, then then uh, play a land and cast Ill-Timed Explosion and uh, get rid of the Virtue. So let's go with Memory Deluge here. Did not find anything. Uh, hmm. So I guess we don't really want to play Ill-Timed Explosion here. I can get a land. I'm wondering if I should get two of the lands or a redundant copy of Nyssa. Probably a redundant copy of Nyssa. All right, let's go ahead and play the Cabaret Courtyard. Let's tap this for blue. Uh, green. All right, we hit an Aftermath Analyst, which is nice. This is actually interesting. I can actually cast Ill-Timed Explosion to kill Mosswood Dread Knight and Deep Cavern Bat. I wonder if that's worth it. Or I can just run out the Aftermath Analyst. They have two cards in hand. I think I'm just going to run out the Aftermath Analyst. And... Archaeologist definitely going to get in front of the Shieldred here. Yeah, this is a strange game though. Definitely a, a weird game just because I haven't been able to use my analysts yet. They have they're they're running lower on resources here. They do have that restless cottage. So they could use that restless cottage to exile the memory of deluge in my graveyard. 
So then I'm going to have to lean pretty heavily on this Aftermath Analyst to uh, generate me enough mana to just try to go off, which I think we can. I think we can do that. Definitely just Chumping Shield or taking the three here because I don't want to lose either of these creatures. And this is, yeah, this is a pretty big turn. The nice thing about this deck is, other than, I mean, we have the ill-timed explosions. We don't care about the Deep Cavern Bat that much. But Memory Deluge doesn't draw a card, so that doesn't get affected by the Shieldred as much. All right, do you have a removal spell? Okay, no. All right, here we go. Oh my goodness, Vampire's Vengeance. Vampire's Vengeance is really nice. Wow. Vampire's Vengeance getting back, killing those and getting, oh my goodness, that is disgusting. All right, well, let's start things by using Aftermath Analyst here. All right, here we go. <laughs> this is, these are the triggers. This is the deck going off. We hit another Nissa, which is what we don't want necessarily. Blue, get some red, a little more blue, a little more red. Now we fetch all the lands. Let's get green, sure. Green, let's get green. It's a lot of triggers, it's a, I, I do warn you. Warning you now, lots of triggers. Uh, blue. I think I have enough blue here. Yeah, I have two blue. Okay. I don't think I'm going to need all this red. All right. Then let's go ahead and play this. Yep. Yep. Let's play Analyst. Okay. Um... I haven't played a land just yet. I guess I can lead with ill-timed explosion. Uh, decline. Okay. <sighs> Need to find a virtue at some point. Um... And discard this. Let's play this. Generate a bunch more mana. Green. Oh, oh, we have one more land to get. Red. Let's crack this and start again. <laughs> oh my gosh, this deck is ridiculous. Blue. Blue, green, green, uh, blue, sure. The, the thing is now we don't have any more lands to get, so we just need to start digging. Uh, I'm also interested in just killing the Shieldred. So we're not netting that much mana. We do need to just find a Virtue. So I think I'm just going to cast Deluge. Uh, we found their virtue, and yeah, let's go with the, um, I don't think I need another deluge now. Three, four, five, six. And then we can kill Shieldred. One, two, one, two, three, four. I can, ki I can do Shieldred for four, and then I'll have four mana. Oh, I can, I can also, oh, my, my mana situation. I messed up my mana situation. Yeah. See, so this is, this is, this is precisely why I shouldn't, you know, I'm, I'm still in the process of kind of learning how to play this deck, but it's okay.
All right, let's go get um, Aftermath Analyst back. And then let's go ahead and kill the Shieldred. And this is just to gain life. All right. I think we're going to be good here now because we have the World Souls Rage. I can play Aftermath Analyst as well. And we'll pass. The thing is, even if they exile my graveyard, uh, at this point, we are good to just kill them with Virtue plus World Souls Rage. They would need to exile my graveyard plus also have Bat to kill the World Souls Rage. But that doesn't matter either because we can use Vampire's uh, Vengeance to kill the Bat. But game one is definitely a game that we are supposed to win. Because the bats are nice, but at some point, like, they just can't kill fast enough. So at some point, I'm just going to find my vengeance or my ill-timed explosion. All right. So 7, 13, 17 mana. 7 mana to cast Virtue of Strength. Right? So we'll have 10 mana. Um, and that, that gives us 30 mana for World Souls Rage. So we can do this for 27. <laughs> oh, 28, sorry. <laughs> well, there you go. Game one. Hadouken. Hadouken. All right, sideboard time. I don't, you know, as good as that was that game, I don't think it's that great here um i do here's the one thing that i'm definitely going to be a little bit weaker on i do think doppelgang is pretty nice i think doppelgang is a card that you probably want to bring in in most matchups you just never know right you just never know whether or not your opponents can just have stone brain or not so i think it's just it's already not bad against mid-range decks in general if you can get to eight mana um but i think you just kind of always want to bring this card in but game one you don't really need it because the fireball effect is usually good enough. The only matchup that's bad game one, there's this Demir control deck that plays the deadly cover-up or whatever, the Wrath. And it, if they duress away your World Souls Rage, then they exile all copies and then you can't win. I do think I want a Braid over the Vampire's Vengeance because the Abraid kills Glissa. Um, don't think I need Turn the Earth. Don't want Barrage or Negate or anything like that. Shigeki could also be interesting. Although I don't know if I want to bring in Shigeki against the deck that is looking to exile my graveyard a bunch anyways. Titania is okay. I don't care too much about the life, though. So I think I just mostly want to bring in... Um, I think I mostly want to bring in the Abrades just to have a little more uh, interaction. They could have Unlicensed Hearse. It kills random Tranquil Field Frillbacks. I can also probably shave like one Virtue of Strength and then just need to cut one more card, maybe like one Spelunking. And uh, yeah... Let's try something like that. And you can tell me in the comments just how poorly I sideboarded because, like I said, I don't, I don't know how to sideboard with this deck, really. Just playing the games and showing you the cool stuffs. The best indication of watching somebody and re recognizing that they don't know how to sideboard is when they shave. They're like, oh, I can shave this. All right, I'll keep this. I can't cast my abrades just yet. But I do have two lands on the draw. Like I said, this deck has a lot of mana sources. All right, they're going to duress me, sure. They're... Virtue of Strength is a pretty good card here to get because that's basically a third land for me. And it's a two for one, too. Oh, they took a braid? Okay, sure. Let's get a forest here with Broker's Hideout. Looks like they might have Deep Cavern Bat, actually. Oh, second duress. All right. If they can follow this up with a solid three mana threat, then it's going to be problematic. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, I'm going to do that. I'm going to play this and go get a mountain in case they play Glissa. Now, if they play Sentinel or Preacher, then 
Obviously, none of our creatures matter. All right, Deep Cavern Bat. I assume they take the Abrade here. As that is the way to kill the bat. Or they can, like, take the Nissa and force me to cast the Abrade. Both work. Yep, okay. That's fine. <laughs> or I can just draw backup Nissa and not worry about the Deep Cavern Bat. All right, now they're taking a braid. Yeah. Oh man, how good would like a fetch land be? Okay, well, you know what? I can't complain. I'll take any land. I don't think I run out the Aftermath Analyst though. I think I'm gonna... Well, let's attack first. Because these creatures can't... I can't block these creatures anyways. Let's do this. Let's get blue. And let's play Memory Deluge. It's just the best use of our mana. Let's get a Courtyard and another Deluge. Courtyard very good with this Aftermath Analyst setup. Now, they could play the Frillback this turn, right? Oh, Gix's command. So they're, they're, they're trying to put pressure on me. Which, and it's actually not bad here. So they're going to make me sack my Nyssa and pump their Deep Cavern Bat. So they hit me for four. And that, that's, that was pretty rough. I'm not going to lie. Because I was trying to say... Oh my gosh. <laughs> All right. We'll do that. And we'll discard... Memory Deluge, definitely. And... I think the Cabaretti Courtyard. Yeah. All right. We'll take our creatures back. Thank you very much. Then I'll play this and get Mountain. I'm doing this just, just in case they have like another bat. Just, now I can just go... Um, okay, they had the Furl back. Okay. All right. Fair enough. But they're down to one card. So it's not like... Wait, did they... They didn't exile my graveyard. I think that was a mistake. What? All right, well, I will make them pay for said mistake. Okay. I mean, they don't have a Tishana's Tidebinder on the splash here, so... I'm just going to use this opportunity to generate a ton of mana. Wow. I am shocked they didn't exile my graveyard. All right. I'll take it though. I'll I'll happily take it. That's all I'm gonna say. All right. So now we have twelve mana in play. So they're gonna start eating through our memory deluges, but that's okay. We have two of them in our graveyard. Uh, we can run out Nyssa. And yeah, I think they're going to go Restless Cottage again. And I, I just want a Deluge in response. Do I care about her braiding this? Uh, sure. I, this might have been a spew, to be honest, but... It's a Shieldred, which is fine. I don't have a Counterspell or anything. All right. We, we're, I mean, we're at the point where we're getting uh, Memory Deluges here, and that should do it. Virtue of Strength plus World Soul's Rage. 5, 6, 10, 13 mana. 13 minus 7 is 6. All right. Um... We have an Aftermath Analyst. Oh, I just drew a land. So 7, 10, 13 mana. 13 minus 7 is 6 mana. 18 mana. 6, 10, 13, 14. No, no, hold on. 6, 10, 13, um, 14. 
Oh, but this generates a mana as well. Yeah, this should do it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So that's 24 mana, so 22. And there you have it. <laughs> Fireball for the win. All right. To be fair, our opponent should have exiled their graveyard, and so that shouldn't have happened. And no, I did not pay my opponent to do uh, to for, for for what happened there. I think um, probably it, that that's just a matter of casting the tranquil furrow back. And if you don't cast it often, then um, you know you probably just click through it. I've made plenty of misclicks the first time I try out a lot of decks. All right, round two, if you will. On the play, yeah, that's a keeper, I think. We have a couple of Broker's Hideouts, an Island, a Mountain, Nyssa, Spelunking, and a World Soul's Rage. Can't imagine mulliganing this. I don't even know what, like, the... No oh, it's the mirror! <laughs> I, I feel like the mirror is just all about speed, right? No, it's not. They got a Plains. Interesting. What? What happened? I'm so confused. I don't know what they're playing. All right. Well, anybody who plays a tri land, the Vampire's Vengeance is not going to be good. We'll just go with that. They had a planes. All right. Uh Doppelgang? Maybe some Tranquil Frillbacks? Shigeki, Turn to Earth, some Negates? Something like that? Probably cut these. It's just like four mana draw two. I guess? Maybe Turn to Earth is not... I don't know if they're recurring things from their graveyard, so that might be bad. And uh, one more card here. I think I can cut another, cut Virtue of Strength again. I, I don't know. I, I have no idea what my opponent is playing. I have never seen somebody play a tap land and, um, and get a planes and then they scoop turn one. So I, we'll find out, I guess. This is a very land heavy hand, but I think I'm going to keep. Is it, is this like the white like a white black mid-range deck or something like that? Do I need to keep up negate here? The thing is, I want to be able to cast Belunking on turn three. Blue, white, I don't know. Alright. I won't keep up negate. Hopefully they don't punish us here ambitious farmhand okay they did not punish us spelunking and let's put this into play let's get another green We can World Souls Rage for three, just to ramp us. That doesn't seem terrible, although they, they, they are keeping up um, counter magic mana. So definitely want to get an island here. So I don't think I'm going to go for World Souls Rage here. I'm just going to play Falaji Archaeologist. See if we hit something. Ooh. Do I want... Another Spelunking to ramp me, or do I just take Virtue of Strength? Virtue of Strength seems better at this point. It doesn't get back the Spelunking, though.
Restoration of Iganjo. Okay. I think I just need to keep up Negate to fight through their counters. They're pretty... Oh, okay. That's been exiled, okay. Do they, I wonder if they have Spell Pierce. I guess we will find out. Hold on. Maybe I just do it for two? I, you know, the thing is, though, I just feel like this type of deck doesn't want Spell Pierce. I feel like this type of deck really wants to play, like, Negates and Disdainful Strokes. Like, you want hard counters, because it's kind of a mid rangey control deck. So... Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all right. Yeah, like a nearly mono-white mid-range deck probably is going to have a tough time. They could have like Kutzel's Flankers and stuff like that for Graveyard Hate, but uh, look at this. Pretend we played in the tournament. Boom. 2 and 0. Oh. Quick 2 and 0, oh, by the way. All right, let's keep it going. I like my opponent's name. Dork Confidant. Win the die roll again? Who is this guy? I think in general, you just want to get a bunch of forests because that's the color you want to get multiple instances of often. Like, you're often using the virtue of strength to get back a thing, plus play another green permanent. Like, the, the red is the only one where you only really need the one. Whereas with, like, blue, you want two for black-white, huh? Do I want Memory Deluge or Vampire's Vengeance? I want Memory Deluge. It's kind of funny because like you get value from casting it with flashback, but I just want to cast it from my from my hand, so. You know, I'm not opposed to World Soul's Rage as a ramp spell. It looks like my opponent is opposed to that. Let's go get the second blue here. And um, we have the seal-timed explosion. I mean, they don't have the most pressure. They're probably going to play like a wedding announcement or something like that here. Okay. There's a wedding announcement or something like that here. Ooh. Nissa is quite interesting. I don't think I need to play ill-timed explosion just yet, though. So I'm just going to wait. Like, they're not putting the most pressure on here. So I'd rather just play Memory Deluge here. All right, that's fine. Do they have a removal spell? Do they just want to, like, get in for more damage? Go for the throat. Okay. That's aggressive. All right. Let's cast Deluge. A lot of good options here. I don't mind World Souls Rage. They have double white. World Souls Rage and probably Virtue of Strength doesn't seem bad here either. So I can World Souls Rage for two. All right, got to think here. Yeah, that doesn't seem bad. Oh my gosh. That's... Okay, I should have gone to the face. All right. I just... For two white, I... This is my... Um, me not playing the format enough. That was my bad. Yeah, that was my bad. I think we're still going to be fine, but that's me not playing the format enough where um, I didn't think they could have a removal spell for two white. <laughs> I should have just targeted their face, I guess. I 
I think we will still be more than fine here. There's just there's just no pressure coming from them, right? So it's just like I can just do whatever I want. Granted, this uh, aftermath analyst is not the most exciting. I mean, I can still get two lands back, I guess. Oh, never mind. I get four lands back. All right. So now they're trying to close things off as quickly as possible. But we do have the sweeper here. And we have the block sacrifice available. And the nice thing, too, is just like these lands gain you a life. So that helps a lot, too. What if they're like the like main deck in Kutzel's flanker or something? That would be pretty sick. When you get to the point where you have to do something like that, you probably should just play a different deck though. So I guess that's the way I look at it. <laughs> All right, five green is probably enough green. Right, six, seven. Okay. So we can slam Virtue of Strength and still have 12 mana available. They could have Get Lost. The thing is, I can still just wait. I can still just wait because I just don't think that they're going to be able to one-shot us. And I think I will. That way I can just like guarantee that I can get the fireball kill. And how are we going to go about this? Um, I think I want to discard a four because they can have the Wandering Emperor to save their stuff. Let's just do that. Actually... Yeah, let's do that. I'm gonna play this. Keep my life total high. Then we can play Aftermath Analyst, crack it, and then we should have enough mana, I think, to Virtue of Strength kill them. Four or five. Like, we sh- we sh- yeah, they have Wandering Emperor. Okay. They're at 22. I don't know if that changes the equation. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 10, 11, 12. I think um, we should be good here, though. I discarded Niska just because I thought it was very likely that they had a removal spell. Like, look at the cards that they're playing. So I just didn't think it would be that good. All right, let's get all the lands out of our deck. Mastros and Cabarettis. Okay, so Mastros should get all the blue if I can get it. Yeah, let's fetch all the blue with Mastros. Because Cabaretti gets red and green. So we'll have all the lands out of our deck. <laughs> basically this allows us to play around get lost because get lost does kill virtue so now we're going to have 7 10 12 7 plus 6 13 14 15 16. okay 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 15 16 17 10 30 mana okay yeah and we have the redundant world souls rage gg Thirty to the face. 
Or is it whatever? 25 to the face? Oh, is it 28? Maybe. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, yeah, 28 to the face. Boom. <laughs> it's so satisfying when you just fireball them out. All right, how are we sideboarding here? They are White, Black, Deep Cavern Bat, Sarah Paragon. A Braid certainly seems good. I'm not sure about Vampire's Vengeance. Lithomantic Barrage kills Wandering Emperor, I guess. But I don't know if I care enough about that. I think Titania is probably good enough. I do like Doppelgang against the mid-range decks. I think we're just going to sideboard very similarly to how we sideboarded uh, previously. I wonder if Tranquil... F yeah, I mean, this kills Wedding Announcement, and if they bring in, like, random hearses and such, it can also kill that. We do need to cut a lot of cards here, though. I don't think its speed is as important here. The games are a little more of a grind. I'll remove one copy of the Virtue of Strength just because they probably have anti-graveyard stuff. Maybe I can cut the Archaeologist. I like all my card draw. I feel like it's kind of an attrition-y battle. All right. Let's try something like that. Play a little more interaction with the Abrade, the Frillback, and the Ill-Timed Explosion and uh, see how things go from there. And I still don't mind World Soul's Rage as like a bad removal spell slash ramp spell. And the thing is with this deck, I know turbo milling yourself is nice, but you can just, like in that game, you can just play a bunch of those tap lands and eventually get them back, right? Um, I mean, I'll... They're going to have a bunch of duresses. Like, I, don't, I really dislike mulliganing against decks with black mana because they're just going to have a ton of, like, hand disruption anyways. Ambitious farmhand, okay. Uh... I guess we can play the first one. I was saving this one for the Nissa interaction. Wedding announcement. Oh, Preacher. Okay. Ooh, ill timed explosion. No blue source, though, sadly. I think we just have to run out Nissa and hope they don't have a removal spell. They had the removal spell. What if we just naturally draw island? That would be great. <laughs> but now we need to find like a, a four mana card, don't we? All right, well, let's just cast it anyways. We don't really have a better option. Uh, unlucky. Um... <laughs> I can choose the decline. Nah. No, I, I kind of want to kill these two. I'll discard like a braid and a mountain. Like, I want to discard lands anyways. I want to keep these fetches for the Nyssa. This Preacher of the Schism, we don't have a great way to kill this thing. Next turn, we can roll, World Souls Rage for, I guess, two? That's not that exciting anyways. Oh, Deep Cavern Bat. Yeah, this is rough. It seems like they have a removal spell here for the Nyssa as well. Oh, geez. Okay, never mind. All right, we'll play Nyssa, and we'll f figure out what we get here. The Reach Creature would be good. Aftermath Analyst would be good. I just don't want another Nyssa, basically.
All right, aftermath analyst is fine. But we are kind of out of action. They're drawing so many cards. Yeah, I think they probably have this one. They've drawn a ton of cards, so if they have like a Kutzel's Flanker or anything like that too, that's going to be very, very good. Yeah, especially given that they're the mana situation that they've set up here. All right, what creature are we getting? Ooh, another Aftermath Analyst. Oh, certainly playing it. Um, so if they don't, so they didn't make a thing with the Mirax. You see that? They didn't make a token. So they 100% have Kutzel's Flanker, which is unfortunate. Okay, no blocks. So what I'm going to have to do is next turn play the Broker's Hideout and then like do it once and then in response do it again. All right, so let's get a blue. Green. One, two, yep. Yeah. Aftermath Analyst. They're gonna cast their Flinker. Maybe they don't 100% have it, I don't know. This will definitely set us up for a lot of top taps, but we're still in a lot of trouble here. You know what I mean? Like, if, yeah, we're still in a lot of trouble. Like, I have all this mana, but nothing to do with the mana. But, hey, like I said, this is going to set us up for a big top deck. That's the plan. And we're gaining a bunch of life. And we're going to pass. We'll block sack, I guess. Just to keep ourselves at a reasonably high life total. They have so many cards. Preacher the Schism too strong. Like, if they play the flanker here, I've already done my damage. Like, I don't care. It doesn't really matter. Oh, you know what would be sick? Doppelgang off the top. Oh my gosh. 11, 14 mana. We'll play this courtyard and fetch another creature potentially with the Nissa. They might have a way to kill the Nissa though. What if we deck them? Maybe we can deck them. World Souls Rage. Um, is that enough? <laughs> I don't actually know. Why didn't you kill this to begin with? All right. Well, I still get my mana, so it's the same as playing a normal land. No, no, playing a normal land would have been better. I actually didn't do the math there. Um... 
11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Oh, we're a little bit short. We are a little bit short. Oh, man. Two, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. All right. I wonder if there's something else I could have done with my mana. One, two, eight, thirteen. We could have gone them for fourteen had we played a regular land, but I think we have thirteen, right? But five, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. So yeah. All right. <laughs> okay, let's see what I need to draw another World Souls Rage. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We're not dead. So here we go. That doesn't do it. We can draw a, a removal spell. All right, World Souls Rage off the top. Or uh, a way to kill the Deep Cavern Bat to get that World Souls Rage back. Okay! Oh, it's a 3-3? Three, three. We need a 3-drop off Ill-Timed Explosion. Come on! 3-drop! Yes! <laughs> oh, that's insane! Oh my gosh. <laughs> Did we actually win this game? <laughs> Boom. Oh wait. Uh 3 8 4 8 11 so 9. Oh my gosh, that's that's crazy. <laughs> Yes! Easy game. All right, Diamond 1. Look at us. Road to rank 1 constructed? Road to rank 1 constructed? Okay, you know what? I'll do one more match. It's like a, it's like a Magic Online Standard League, right? This is our fourth match. We are currently 3-0. 3-0. All right, we finally lost the die roll. It's okay. I'm going to keep this hand. Two Forest, Maestro's Theater, Aftermath Analyst, Vampire's Vengeance, Falaji, Nissa. Let's go fetch... Ooh, do I want Island or Mountain? Well, let's see. What... Why is everybody playing this black-white deck? Did I miss the memo? Is this deck supposed to be good? I think it's more important to get red, honestly. If they have like the deep cavern, what the heck? Did not expect that. Did not expect that. Power Stone Engineer? What? All right, we got a bit of a brew here. Steel Seraph. Okay. All right, they're beating me down. How many lands did I hit? Two? Well, they have a bunch of flyers, which I can't do anything about. And our hand doesn't really have that much action. They're, they have four mana available. Definitely playing this. Let's get a blue. Let's get a blue. Let's get a green. Okay. I should probably just use this now. All right. Let's go add a bunch of green mana and red mana, I guess. Whoa. All right. Our opponent just scooped. 
They had enough. They had enough. Wow. Okay, so they're playing... Was it Silver Ser... Does that thing count as a white creature? Hold on. Let, let me look it up here. Steel Seraph. Are you a white creature? No, it's an artifact creature. You may cast a spell with different mana cost, color, and size. Okay. I'm just wondering. I feel like I still probably want this. I don't know. I, I, I mean... The Frillback's probably good. Let, let, look, let's just board the same way that we did against all the other decks. Let's do the Abrades. Let's shave this. Cut these into Falajis and Maybe the Barrage is good. Maybe Vampire's Vengeance is good. I don't know. The nice thing about the Frillback is you kind of feel okay bringing it in in any matchup. Like, it's always going to be okay, right? Ooh, that's good. I did want a blue source. So let's play the Maestro's Theater. Maestro's Theater, excuse me. Razor, Lens, Razor Lash Transmogrant, okay. Not very good against us. I mean, it's a 3-1. But I don't have a lot of non-basics, so it's not especially good. Soul Search. Okay. Does it exile? Oh, that's very good against Memory Deluge. That's a Tranquil Frillback. Am I interested in that? Maybe? Kills the Transmogrant. I don't think I'm interested in abrading this. No, I think I'm I think I'm more interested in aftermath analyst, honestly. And I just want to try to use my mana as well as I can. I don't want to attack into uh wandering emperor. Okay, I see. I see what you're doing. Here, I will go ahead and use this main phase to play around Kutzel's whatever. Kutzel's flanker. Yep. Just to get a bunch of lands in play. Let's go get a blue. I know we take a little more damage, but I think that's okay. Although we are kind of at the point where we just need to top deck something, they were able to successfully just kill everything. This is kind of interesting. I can play Virtue of Strength Nissa, but all that mana doesn't do me any good. Ooh, Memory Deluge. That's super nice. Let's see what your play is. Okay. How much does this cost to return? Okay. Uh... I guess I just abrade this 3-3. I could also abrade this. It costs 6 mana to buy back. Does this have death touch? No. Lock, block. Crack. All right. Uh, green, red, got another Aftermath Analyst, great. Green, blue, I don't know, it doesn't matter. 
Oh, no, no. I, it does matter. I have memory deluge. Okay, I'll name blue. Oh, if, if my plan was the deluge, I should have done this completely differently. Yeah, I messed up. I, I took one too much damage. Because, like, memory deluge in here does make a lot of sense. Yeah, I, I took one one extra point of damage. But we should be fine. All right. So... Does this actually net us mana? I don't think that it does. We have 4, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 mana. Three, six, nine, twelve, fifteen, eighteen, twenty-one damage. Wow. That didn't do anything. Um Name blue. I was trying to hit something sweet with the Nissa, but we did not. All right, so we're not going to have a great turn here. I don't think we have a lethal set up here. Oh, wait. Oh, did I, I might have messed up the uh, what I get there either. 13, 16, 17, 18, 19, 22 mana. So we can hit them for 20. Oh, no, we got it. We got it. Okay. 13, 16, 19, 22. Okay, 20. And then we can fireball them again. <laughs> Oh my gosh, this deck is ridiculous. I mean, we also got like really good matchups, I think. Like just playing against mono black white mid range is very good for us. I'm I wonder I guess they're playing this for like the Esper matchup. Transmogrant is probably decent against Esper. All right. And there you have it. There you have it. Clean 4-0. Nice display of strength. And this is why this deck put four copies in the top four of the last standard um, challenge, which is kind of ridiculous if you think about it. Like This deck is just highly, highly consistent. Um, the, and, and the thing is... Normally, when you look at combo decks, they're typically really, really bad against creature decks, right? Just because you have so many pieces that you need to find, and when you draw those pieces, you just can't do anything. But the thing is, the combo pieces here are a removal spell, right? A removal spell. You're playing six sweepers. Other combo pieces are blockers, right? Aftermath Analyst, Archaeologist, and Nissa are all just blockers, right? So they help you against the aggressive decks. And not only that, all these lands gain you a life. So all of that together just buys you just enough time for the aggressive matchups. You smash the mid-range decks. And I think the only matchups that are kind of rough are the decks that have a lot of counter spells. But in those matchups, you can generally put a lot of mana into play. And sometimes you can overpower them with all the mana, with the mana advantage that you can establish because they can counter all of your aftermath analysts, right? And the moment one of these resolves, boom, right? Because it's like you have Aftermath Analyst and World Souls Rage as multiple ways to just put a bunch of lands from your graveyard onto the battlefield. And then you have, not only that, you have the redundancy from Virtue of Strength. Not only does this act as a way to supercharge your mana and just one-shot your opponents with World Souls Rage, it's also just a great way 
to get back your Aftermath Analysts or your Nissas because they are going to die. They die often, right? Early and often because that's the only target for the removal spells that your opponents are going to play. But because you have the Virtue of Strength, it doesn't really matter. It's like, yeah, I just want to mill myself anyways, right? And then after you do, I just play my Virtue of Strength, get this back. And then at some point, at some point, I just need to do it really once. The moment you're able to Analyst once and get like three lands into play, I mean, then you're just, you have so much mana to play with, it's really, really hard to lose from there. So this deck, thoroughly, thoroughly impressive. And people are really going to have to warp their decks to really have a chance against you. They're going to have to adjust their approach to the to the format, what cards they choose to play in the main. You already see people playing cards like Tranquil Frailback just for this matchup. And you're also going to see people play cards in their sideboard to really disrupt what you're trying to do. Uh, I believe Rest in Peace might be in, in OTJ. Yeah, that's a good one. Rest in Peace is a good one because it doesn't get abraded. Tranquil Frailback still is kind of a nice catch-all answer to all those things, but... Um, yeah, this deck has just proven to be very, very resilient. Now, it only really has a plan A. So that's the that's the the good thing in terms of if you want to beat this deck, which is why it's pretty weak to cards like Deadly Cover-Up. Um, if you play cards like Stone Brain, for example, that can also be very useful. Um, and if they do, then you have to adjust, right? You have to adjust. You have to play like a Doppelgang main. You might need to play some Tyran Xs in the sideboard, something along those lines. But as is... I think this deck still remains one of the top options, but it certainly requires um, a bit of practice playing with the deck because sequencing with this deck is extremely, extremely important. But hey, we went 4-0 with this deck. Should I play this next week? I don't know. I don't think so. I don't think I play this deck well enough. I don't really know how to sideboard, but it's a very, very powerful deck. Um, and if you want to have some fun and play Magic a slightly different way, this is certainly uh, an approach you can take. This is certainly an approach you can take. So, uh, yeah. This is going to be around, and it's going to be around for a while. Make sure, if you want to beat this deck, pack your deck with some Graveyard Hate, with some counter spells and what have you, to try to beat people down. Anyways, thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. Feel free to hit the like or subscribe button for more daily videos just like this. I'll catch you tomorrow.